Okay, so hello, uh, welcome. Thank you for this opportunity to be here to uh, talk to you a little about uh, inclusive digital education. So right now the change of technology is uh, changing at a fast pace, we know that, and we adapt and adopt technology every day. Um, we are seeing AI changing things, but what about the future? How are we going to face this? And how are children going to face this? So are we preparing children for what is coming? Do we even know what is coming? And how can we prepare the children if we don't even know what is coming? <laughs> so uh, before I continue a little bit um, about me, so I have a bachelor and a master's in computer engineering. And right now I'm doing a PhD focused on accessibility for children with visual impairments. I've also uh, taught um, children from ages 6 to 16, technologies and uh, programming a little bit um, for preparing them for this digital uh, education. So uh, education prepares us for the future and help us understand the world that we are living in. And nowadays, particularly in Portugal, because that's the case that I know, <laughs> Um, children are included in an inclusive model of education. So classrooms are shared um, with children of different abilities. So regardless of their abilities, children share a classroom, they share the tools. And this doesn't mean that they are included in, in this education. This doesn't mean that they are uh, having the same opportunities as their peers because children are included when they feel supported, when they feel they can participate, they can be autonomous, that they are learning. And so how, how does this, why aren't they feeling included? So in the case of Portugal, teachers are reporting that um, they don't feel supported to use the tools, to use new tools or to use uh, inclusive tools because no one teaches them how to use these tools. Maybe they are too hard to understand, maybe they have um, a steep learning curve, and so teachers don't feel supported to uh, teach with, with those tools, with those inclusive tools. So they have to adapt their activities in the classroom, or they have to exclude the children of some activities. And when... Sorry. I should have, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> when looking at these numbers, it's, it's a bit sad to think that if we don't change the norm, children with visual impairments won't have the same opportunities as their peers. And yeah, sure. So <laughs> especially in digital education, which is so relevant right now when we are uh, talking about it today, uh, it's already present in uh, school curriculums, it's already present in, in the Portuguese curriculum, and computational thinking training, we know that fosters a lot of skill development, creativity, uh, cognitive development, um, social development even, and this type uh, of activity, it's really important for children right now. And they learn through programming languages. Maybe you've heard of Scratch. Scratch, or Blockly, is um, a visual and virtual programming language that transforms all of these abstract concepts and all of these difficult things to understand in more easy um, action blocks that children can manipulate and use to create games or create images or videos. Um, but all of this is highly visual, right? All of this is happening on a screen, on a virtual screen, on an iPad, on a computer. So children with visual impairments don't really have full access to this. They don't, they don't have the same opportunities as their sighted peers. So how can they make, um, how can they access all of these opportunities? So with all of this in mind, we developed uh, this little project called BATS, so Block-Based Accessible Tangible System. So it's a fully tangible system that children can use to start programming, start 
learning these basic concepts and start understanding the world they live in and even become the next uh, engineers, the next inventors. So um, it's really use, easy to, to use, I think. Um, and I'm going to show you what children think as well. Uh, it's fully tangible. So um, the blocks have little, have 3D elements. They have the different cues. They have different colors. So children have many aspects to identify these blocks. And then they start with the basic concepts to uh, program. And it translates in the behavior of the robot. So children can listen to the robot. They can, if they can see light, they can see the lights of the robot. And even the movement, they can follow it. But I'll show you a little video, I think. Yeah. OK. So there's an app, but the app is really, really simple. So children don't really have to interact with it and everything becomes uh, fully tangible. So, uh, the app only reads the blocks. I don't want him to fall off the table, but <laughs> I'm going to try to do something easy. Um, so, for example, I want him to go forwards. He's not... Okay. So... So it says what it's going to do. So they have different blocks that they can use. They have to go forwards, uh, go backwards, um, and even a little bit of a not-so-easy concept to, to understand that it's the repetition block. And those who use <laughs> programming and learn programming know that sometimes the loops and the wilds and everything may be a bit difficult to understand at first. But this is the first step. So. I'm going to try to do just like two forwards. <laughs> okay, maybe forward and speak. Because he's really cute when he speaks. <laughs> maybe you can't listen. Um, but yeah, so this is it. It seems really simple, but it gives children the opportunity to start understanding these concepts, these have an easier introduction to all of these concepts that can seem so intense. And if they are listening to this, so for example, in virtual languages, all the access that children with visual impairments have is to listen, it can be a bit difficult to understand and even cognitively is heavier. So, we are really focused on um, bettering this as well. Um, and we are really happy that this aligns with the United Nations Sustainable, Sustainable Development Goals because it focuses on ensuring that um, all children have an inclusive uh, environment to learn. It's equitable in terms of opportunities for their future and Computer literacy, in general, gives us resources, gives us information, and it gives us opportunities uh, socially, economically, um, and even to build on this for our future. So, um, we developed this, and we've been uh, talking to families, asking them for their feedback, and even in schools, we, we've used this, this little robot and the blocks, and we've had great feedback. And we know this is not the end, we know this is the beginning. Um, but children really like the robot, because the robot itself uh, only has one eye, and he, he talks, the little expressions that he does, the little... Um, everything, that the movements and the lights, they really like the, the robot. And the parents highlighted that it was really important to have the different aspects of the blocks for children to choose what they feel most comfortable with while um, identifying the blocks, while familiarizing themselves with this language. So 
all of these different cues, all of these multimodalities that the um, that they are presented with, parents and children really like them in, in general. And I'm saying children, but especially children with, with visual impairments. But parents also told us that they, they want this to um, evolve, they want this to be um, more present in their kids' lives. So they don't want this to be uh, just for them to... They want every, every aspect of their children's life to be inclusive. They want their children to feel that they are included in culture, in, um, well, daily city mobility, right? So children can be a little more independent and grow a little more independent. So today I'm only talking about digital literacy, but I think we should think about all of these other aspects. And so I'll just leave you with this one question that on our day-to-day -day lives and with our work, everything, where can we create inclusion? So thank you for your time. <laughs>